Mm-hmm. I'm Judy Shaw for NYSE Floor Talk. Joining me today is Chang Wen. Chang Wen is CEO and co-founder of Ninja Van. Chang Wen, it's so great to see you. Thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks for the invite. You know, I wish I could be here with you guys in person, but I think this year we just got to make this work. Yes, for sure. One day in person. Um, now, quick note to our viewers, this interview is for informational purposes only. The NYSE doesn't recommend any investments or investment strategies. All right, so Chang Wen, tell me about the logistics sector in Southeast Asia. I think it's a sector which is really interesting, but to, me, to be honest, I think it's growing extremely quickly because it honestly is just a proxy to the e-commerce scene in Southeast Asia. I'm sure many of you are familiar with C. Uh, it's growing exponentially. That the, the marquee e-commerce brand in Southeast Asia for C would be Shopee, and the other marquee brand for Alibaba would then be Lazada. And I think there are a few small other marketplaces growing really quickly in Southeast Asia. So, I mean, to be honest, I think what I am seeing in Southeast Asia is huge, unbridled, exponential growth in e-commerce. And we're very thankful that we are obviously on the coattails of e-commerce growth, because if you buy something online, you need us to deliver it. So I think that's where we're seeing a lot of excitement happening in the Southeast Asian e-commerce space. And when it comes to logistics, it's actually, we believe in keeping things simple. It's not about necessarily delivering it to you or in an hour necessarily or delivering it in some special way or other through autonomous vehicles. We believe in keeping it simple, making sure that we take the hassle out of your parcel, that shopping online should be as easy as possible. And we're not here to complicate things. We're here to make your life as simple as possible. So now we are seeing lots of logistics players entering the sea market. What sets you apart from other players operating in the region? I think a lot of players that come in, they focus on different niches. Some of them focus on cold chain. Some of them focus on cross-border. I think increasing what we're seeing is more players are coming into the point-to-point space for 15 minutes, one hour delivery services. And fundamentally, we believe that these services will always exist and there will be some demand for that. But let's ask ourselves, honestly, when you buy something on Amazon, do you really need it in that one hour? Or is next day good enough for most people? Or are you going to pay three times the price for something delivered in 15 minutes? So I think that the reality is the vast majority of the growing e-commerce market resides in next day or you know, time-definite deliveries. And I think that's the space that we are playing in. And this space requires heavy upfront investment in, in infrastructure, heavy upfront investment in maintaining large fleets, large line haul fleets. And I think the, the, the upfront requirement on all these capital expenditure kind of prevents new players from coming in. We don't actually see the ability for asset-like point-to-point kind of players to play in the space we play. So I think in the logistics space, yes, many people are coming in, but in the special, in the, in the, in the mass market area where we focus on, I don't think we're seeing many competitors enter the market right now. All right. So now you recently launched Ninja Chat, which is an AI powered social messaging system. Tell me about that and tell me about some of the other products that you've rolled out to create a more hassle-free experience for your customers. Good, good thing you mentioned hassle-free because that's really the core of it all. Okay, let me tell you why we don't believe in launching an app for our customers. Imagine you are a customer, you are shopping on the Amazon app. It's a great app. And you know you, you kind of find everything you want there, you make the entire purchase and your journey lives there. Would you really want to download a logistics provider's app to track your parcel? No, I think that is kind of thinking perhaps a bit too highly about on, on, of ourselves. You know, we're not that important that you need an app for us. All you want is the confidence and know that your parcel is arriving and a very simple ability to perhaps let the courier know if you're not home so that you could drop it at a nearby convenience store. You could reschedule it or, you know, in, in, in the rare case that it's lost, you know, have someone you can talk to very easily and resolve the entire scenario. I think the last thing you'll to, to, to be doing is to call a hotline, wait for half an hour, the line drops off when you're midway through your sentence, when you're you know, reading out your 100-digit tracking ID. But that's not a good experience. That's not hassle-free. Hassle-free is the moment we, we know they have a shipment coming from wherever you bought it from. So you get a message on WhatsApp, you get a message on Messenger, you get a message on uh, Facebook Messenger or, or Telegram. And it's so simple, you just get a message and from there, we want to have a conversation with you. We want you to be notified but not irritated. We don't want you to go through the hassle of downloading too many things. We want to be part of your life and kind of not intrude on it. And I think that's why we believe a lot that chat will be the future of how we interact with our customers in a very simple, hassle-free way. 
Okay, and finally, Chang Wen, um, the pandemic has definitely created more demand for online shopping, and it's something I can attest to. Um, how has that changed the way Ninja Van operates, and do you think that the demand will be sustained after the pandemic? Well, I think, first of all, we believe that demand will be sustained. I, I lived in the U.S. for a while, and that's where I got exposed to Amazon, and then, you know, only once you shop online, you don't really go back. So a lot of people in Southeast Asia, I think, I believe, are shopping for the first time online. And the pandemic has forced them to do so. Previously, it was maybe it's cheaper, maybe it's more convenient, but you know, they can get everything they want in a nearby shopping mall. But when people were unable to travel, I think that's when people were really forced to use it. And because of how much we have improved over the years, the e-commerce experience, the shipping experience, you actually realize that when you tried it the first time, it was a very predictable, very hassle-free experience end-to-end. -end. People are continuing that habit. So I think on the back of that, we are very confident that e-commerce and logistics will continue to grow significantly in the next few years. And the pandemic has kind of pushed everything forward three years. So back to our call, we do believe that if we make the experience hassle-free, so this will allow e-commerce to grow even further. And it's not just about working with the biggest platforms or marketplaces. We want to work with small local curators who are exploring, selling their own items. You see a lot of people turn hobbyists. Uh, I, I became a gardener over the pandemic. So, and a lot of these people are starting to sell their creations online. How do we help them do it easily without necessarily having to go to the marketplaces like Shopee or Lazada? Could they sell it on Facebook? And you see a lot of people doing that. They are sharing about their hobbies. Someone asks them, oh, I really love that creation you have. Can I possibly buy it? They're going, mm, yeah, I never thought about that. But sure, you know, I'll sell it to you. And after a while, it becomes a small business. So we're seeing a lot of that. And the question then, how can we as a shipping partner for them. Also support them on payment options, on the ability to sell on social media easily. I think there are many opportunities for us there. That's definitely something which we believe we will double down on. We just want to help all of these new hobbyists and entrepreneurs succeed in this very ever-changing landscape. All right, Chang Wen, it's been wonderful to talk with you. Thank you for joining me on NYC Floor Talk. Thank you, always welcome.